20 minutes of useless Animal Crossing facts that you definitely don't need to know, but now you're gonna know because you watched this video. Ready, set, go. Before the Animal Crossing Happy Home Paradise update, Cars were a rarity in the Animal Crossing universe, only having a few appearances. There was Gracie who randomly showed up in a convertible in the original Animal Crossing game, and you got a taxi ride when joining your city in Animal Crossing Wild World. Animal Crossing Pocket Camp would make RVs more of a regular thing, so having placeable cars and trucks in the main game isn't too crazy nowadays. Super Smash Bros is based on Gen 2, the Wild World era of Animal Crossing, and never was updated to match the newer designs of villagers for Generation 3 or Generation 4. Also in Super Smash Bros, if you play on Smashville between 8 p.m. and midnight on Saturdays, KK Slider will appear and perform, just like in the mainline Animal Crossing games. Timmy and Tommy are not actually related to Tom Nook. He just found them on the street one day and took them in. For Animal Crossing New Horizons, there was this weird commercial where this girl says goodbye to her friends in uni or boarding school or something, and she's so sad, but then her friends gave her Animal Crossing and she plays it the whole ride home. And then I think it's funny, the commercial cuts ahead and her parents are unpacking the stuff for her and she's just sitting there not helping, laying on the couch playing Animal Crossing while other people do the work for her. Not really sure what the message is supposed to be here. There's also this one Animal Crossing commercial that had Jessica Alba in it, and this other Animal Crossing commercial with Brie Larson. In the Mario Kart Animal Crossing racetrack, there are a lot of subtle references to the game that are kind of clever. Like if you hit a rock, bells will come out, just like the money rock in the game. And you can even see the train in the background from Animal Crossing Population Growing and New Leaf. There's also some items that are suspended by balloons. And of course, there are different seasons represented as alternate versions of the track, just like how the game changes over with the real seasons. There was this weird Nintendo DS Animal Crossing Wild World commercial where we see people with real animal heads. Yeah, it was weird. There was also this GameCube commercial where we saw all of the villagers in these mascot suits. The early 2000s were pretty weird. To promote Animal Crossing New Horizon, they actually did this live stage promotion to showcase the game where they brought elements from New Horizons to life. It's pretty cool. You can see a lot of things from the game like Dodo Airlines and whatnot. But interestingly enough, the character mascots that they used for Isabel and Tom Nook are actually wearing the wrong outfits. They are wearing the outfits that those characters wore in Animal Crossing New Leaf and not their updated clothing that they wear in Animal Crossing New Horizons. In the original Animal Crossing GameCube game, if you ran outside during the sunlight during the summertime, you could actually get a sunburn effect on your character and they wanted you to use this as a motivation to use umbrellas. They ended up cutting this feature out in later releases of games. Also in the GameCube version of Animal Crossing, it let you have 15 villagers instead of the 10 that we have nowadays. There was also VHS tapes that you could get in the game that villagers would have you deliver from one villager to another. A lot of people already know this one, but Animal Forest was released on the Nintendo 64 in Japan before Animal Crossing would come to the West on the GameCube. But the Nintendo 64 version of the game actually didn't have the Abel Sisters in the game at all. Animal Crossing New Horizons has secret KK songs that play renditions of the main themes from previous titles in the Animal Crossing universe. You can find this wanted sign poster on the back of the police station in the original Animal Crossing game. Interestingly enough, the Animal Crossing anime movie that released during the second generation of Animal Crossing actually references aliens, which is pretty wild to think about. Over the years, there's been a lot of other interesting relations to aliens that have popped up here and there, which are a little bit creepy, but it is unique that they keep recurring throughout the Animal Crossing franchise to some extent. This is an island that is technically rated four stars. However, if you move this one block one place over, boom, the island's now five stars. The whole mechanics between four and five stars can be pretty frustrating at times if you don't know what's going on. To this day, we still don't know who was supposed to be the mayor of the village in Animal Crossing New Leaf. Your character just shows up and then the next day you get a letter in the mail saying, yeah, I think you'll be a great mayor. I decided not to do it after all. Which is weird because that means that that character was in the background lurking, watching, knowing that the villager was gonna take over as the new mayor. And then your villager just kind of is like, yeah, sure, I'll do it, whatever. I don't know, I just think it's really interesting how the bureaucracy in Animal Crossing seems to work, or not work for that matter. Back in the earliest days of Animal Crossing, there were rumors online that you could unlock a lawnmower in the game that would help clean up weeds quicker than having to go and pick them up manually. I always believed this one was true, though I one day 
would eventually learn that that was not at all a thing in Animal Crossing. Though it would have been really helpful in a game like Wild World where weeds are just overly abundant if you literally take more than one day off from the game. Back in 2015, Animal Crossing did a special cross promotion with 7-Eleven to bring special furniture from 7-Eleven into Happy Home Designer. And with that, we were introduced to the villager, Philly, who wears a 7-Eleven shirt and has a 7 on her and would be brought back into New Leaf through the Welcome Amiibo update, but exclusively in Japan where her RV could be invited via the campground's Wi-Fi option while you're at a 7-Eleven. Though, this was one of the only villagers who couldn't actually be invited to move into your town. Even stranger, Philly has the number 7 in the superhero form, much like the other villagers that are numbered off as these special type of heroes that are a part of some sort of team, with Kid Cat being number 1, Agent S being number 2, Big Top number 3, and Rocket number 4. But who are the number 5 and number 6 villagers? Well, we don't know. Typically speaking, most villagers are brought back from game to game. However, there are a handful of villagers that are lost forever and not included in later releases of Animal Crossing. The original Animal Crossing GameCube commercials were these really weird live action parodies of the TV show The Real World. In this 2002 sweepstakes for Animal Crossing, you could win a Panasonic Shockwave CD player. In the North American version of Animal Crossing, on the title screen it says press start with a lowercase p, but in the Europe version of the game, the press start has a capitalized P. In the Australian versions of Animal Crossing, the Mario and Luigi trophies have slightly shorter bases. Apparently there was a data moving service that was provided by Nintendo in Japan that would allow players to transfer their town save data from the N64 game to the GameCube version of the game, but it's unknown when this was discontinued. Amiibo Festival has 23 events. Much like every game but New Horizons, City Folk also is an Animal Crossing game that doesn't have flimsy tools. There may be some secret inflation going on behind the scenes across games, as between Animal Crossing New Leaf and New Horizons, the cost of buying a slingshot increased. Previously, the slingshot only cost 500 bells, but in New Horizon, it cost 900 bells. In Animal Crossing New Leaf, there's a train that goes by at the top of the town, and it can be seen at the 3 minute, 21 minute, 35 minute, and 49 minutes of each hour. You can no longer get Blanca to show up in Animal Crossing City Folk because we Connect 24 discontinued in 2013. Pascal's name may be a reference to the Pascal measurement, which is used to measure pressure underwater, which is named after the philosopher Blaise Pascal. He also is known for inventing the first mechanical calculator. Kind of. The Aran Knit Cardigan translates to this in German. Luke, go ahead and say it. Aran Muster Strick Jacke. Did you know? They make Animal Crossing pillows. Stylistically speaking, it's really interesting that Animal Crossing has been divided into multiple different generations of the game franchise. The first game, including the N64 and GameCube versions, is considered Generation 1, where Wild World, the anime, and City Folk are considered Generation 2. Then we see New Leaf and Happy Home Designer and Amiibo Festival, all classified as Generation 3, the one where they added pants, and then the more refined look that we're used to from New Horizons is considered Generation 4. The first ever reveal of the Rescue Service was in Animal Crossing's New Horizon Direct on February 20th, 2020. The font used by the Nook Inc. logo is the same used for the official Nintendo logo. The typeface is called New Hanafudaya, which is probably a reference to the Hanafuda cards that Nintendo is known for making before they made video games. As of Animal Crossing New Horizons, there are 89 original KK songs. In the 2003 annual Nintendo Power Awards, Tom Nook was nominated as one of the top villains in a Nintendo game, despite him not actually being a villain. When sold at Nook's Cranny, a complete collection of every fossil is worth 261,000 bells. In Animal Crossing New Leaf's Welcome Amiibo update, they removed several no-clip glitches. Amiibo Festival is the lowest rated Animal Crossing game in the series. On March 12th, 2020, with patch 3.1.2, they changed the iOS icon for Pocket Camp to this new one. In the N64 version of Animal Forest, villagers don't react to getting smacked in the head by a net. You know the villager Alfonso? 
Well, his birthday lands on the same day that New Leaf was released in North America. When flowers are watered, the data flag for being watered is actually not stored in the flower itself, but instead the square that the flower is on. CJ's Japanese name, which is Jazutin, may possibly be a reference or pun on the singer Justin Bieber due to his name being Justin and the species of CJ being a beaver. Nook's Cranny is the only one of Nook's shops without an automatic door. There's a feature in the Animal Crossing GameCube port that allows the player's face to be swapped out for a gyroid? I had no idea this was a thing, but apparently Luke found this one, so... Uh, wow. Animal Forest and Animal Crossing had their own unique sound effects when hitting wood with a shovel. This was later removed and hitting wood makes the standard sound effect when you hit solid objects. In Animal Crossing, for whatever reason, the little hand cursor that you use kind of looks like Mickey Mouse's hands. We don't know why. Also, we were looking at this Yoko figurine that popped up in my Animal Crossing game, and we don't know what it's supposed to be. Okay, we looked it up. It's based on classic Japanese Kokeshi dolls. A few years ago, it was uncovered that this blank Nintendo Entertainment System that is found in Animal Crossing on the GameCube isn't just a scam from Crazy Red. Matter of fact, this NES item actually would play any Nintendo Entertainment System ROM game files found on the GameCube's memory card and allow you to play them in Animal Crossing. Which essentially means if you can modify your GameCube memory card to have ROMs of NES games, you can essentially play them in Animal Crossing on original GameCube hardware. Now, interestingly enough, this leads to speculation that this was originally something that Nintendo was planning on utilizing by releasing special memory cards that included other NES games that didn't make their way into the base game itself. Though for whatever reason, this idea was scrapped and it was never used. So for years, people thought that this was just a dud NES that you got from Crazy Red rather than an incredibly interesting and useful item for playing classic video games. Also in Animal Crossing for the GameCube, there are special holiday clothing items that you can't obtain normally in the game without using a special code for Tom Nook. However, these special clothing holiday items do show up on random villagers as the holiday gets nearer. Also, all the way back in the original GameCube Animal Crossing, within the game files, there are references to a tool known as a sickle. We don't really know what that would do in Animal Crossing, though it sounds pretty vicious. There also was a cut villager found in the original Animal Crossing game files known as Chris. For a really long time, fans didn't even know the name of this character, though later references to this character model were revealed to be Chris when translated from Japanese. And while a lot of speculation initially arose suspecting that this character was supposed to be a villager living on the island, newer discoveries actually pointed to the likelihood that this character would have been more related to a special event that would happen in your village and this character was related to that. However, to this day, nobody has actually been able to figure out how this event would have tied in as any references to whatever this character's real intentions were supposed to be have been lost or deleted from the game files. While Animal Crossing has always been known to represent different seasons of the year based on what your real world clock is set to, there were plans to have special ground palettes for the in-between seasons like the transition from winter to spring and fall to winter. And while these exist in the game files, they were never actually implemented into the games themselves. In Animal Crossing City Folk, one of the biggest complaints that players ran into was the fact that the grass in your village would deteriorate over time. This was likely done to create a sense of realism that would allow for natural paths ads in routes that players typically walk to form on their own. However, this also ended up resulting in a lot of players' villages to end up looking like a barren wasteland. In a lot of the game files for Animal Crossing City Folk, there's references to the game being titled RV Forest. And while this does not have to do with camping or anything like that, this was likely because the Nintendo Wii was originally internally referred to as the Nintendo Revolution. So the RV could likely be for the codename Revolution, and Forest is likely a reference to Animal Crossing's original title, Animal Forest, when it originally released on the Nintendo 64 in Japan. Interestingly enough, Animal Crossing New Leaf would also be developed 
under a code name. This time it was called Animal Crossing Garden, at least internally, as many of the files refer to the overall project as Garden. Later on, when Animal Crossing Welcome Amiibo update was rolled out in 2016, the game files then were referred to as Garden Plus instead of just Garden, kind of indicating that this was the end-all be-all expansion for the original project. And the Amiibo update was pretty cool. In Animal Crossing New Horizons, while there are a ton of really cool emotes that you can do, there actually were likely even more emotes that got cut late into development of the game. Some players, such as YouTuber J, have been able to find a way to recreate some of these unused emotes in New Horizons, though they don't have any sound effects associated with them. And these were all emotes that were done in Animal Crossing New Leaf, so it just looks like at the end of the day, there never was the opportunity opportunity to include these emotes into the final release of the game, at least not yet, but they are still really interesting to take a look at. In Animal Crossing New Leaf, there are some files labeled for a GPU test, mostly to test the visuals in Animal Crossing itself, and some of these images are kind of interesting to look at when you see the villagers just t-posing but then when you also see a creepy player model of a sideways animal crossing human face it gets a little bit terrifying still interesting nonetheless that this was discovered in Animal Crossing New Leaf, since you're the mayor of the town, one of the big parts of the game is you get to pick where special outdoor items will be placed for your town to work together to fund the Public Works project. However, there's no opportunities in the game to actually put stuff over on the beach or near the ocean. But some players have found that they've been able to get Isabel glitched over near a beach, and if you put something in what could possibly be a fitting spot in an area you're not supposed to, like the beach, Isabel will give the warning that this area doesn't work because it's too close to the ocean. Though technically you never should be in a scenario where Isabel is close enough to tell you about the ocean. This obviously leads a lot of people into thinking that there was plans to allow you to put special items near the ocean at some point, or at least near the beach, however this was also cut in development. Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival for the Wii U is currently rated the worst Animal Crossing game in the entire franchise history, with a 36.6% ranking on game rankings and a 40 out of 100 on Metacritic. While there were some charming little moments within the game, it is really interesting how publicly rejected this game ended up becoming as the whole amiibo integration wasn't done all that well and it also seemed as a cash grab for amiibo. Out of the base included characters in this game, only one of the characters was not present at any point in Animal Crossing New Horizons. Digby, who was Isabelle's brother, who played a pretty big role in New Leaf as well. So it was surprising to say the least that this character never ended up making any appearances in New Horizons. Okay, well maybe there's a slight correction here. Technically, you can see Digby in New Horizons if you have the character's amiibo. And this is the only character in that list of characters from the Wii U Amiibo Festival game that is restricted specifically to having an amiibo only, falling into the category of other popular characters that didn't return in New Horizons unless you have the amiibo itself. Fortunately, YouTuber Oh It's Doodle Gamer shared what happens if you bring Digby to the Rue in Animal Crossing New Horizons, and we find out what he's been up to all this time. Apparently he used to work for Tom Nook, and now he secretly inspects houses for the Happy Home Academy. It's a shame. I feel like they could have integrated this character with how big of a role he had been, almost a secondary mascot for the New Leaf era of Animal Crossing, in one way or another into being a main character in New Horizons. They brought Reese and Cyrus back, even Tortimer back later on, but unfortunately, this character has kind of been forgotten about. There is a Roblox knockoff of Animal Crossing that exists. Yeah. KK Slider is naked and it is kind of weird the more you think about it. KK Slider has actually performed a live show with a real audience, opening for a live Splatoon 2 show. And it looks like Nintendo is doing this again in October, but this time it's DJ KK Slider. So there's a difference there. But still, it's interesting to know that there are live shows 
related to Animal Crossing in existence. Animal Crossing New Leaf is the only mainline Animal Crossing game to get an update four years after its release. Or at least so far it's the only one. Isabelle's head is actually shaped like a bag of bells. You could argue that she is a bell. Seriously, it took me way too long to notice this one and it kind of blew my mind. Also, if you pay off all of your debt, you can get a statue of yourself in the GameCube version of Animal Crossing. I actually went ahead and spent a hundred days trying to pay off my debt in the GameCube version just to see what the statue looked like, and I made a whole video dedicated on that, so make sure you go check it out after you're done with this video. It's a very wild journey.